potential benefits of omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils that contain mycosapentanoic acid and docosahexanoic acid, EPA and DHA, have been touted for many decades. In fact, uh, almost three decades ago, the GISI Prevenzioni showed that EPA and DHA in patients after myocardial infarction had profound benefits on cardiovascular and all-cause mortality, as well as a number of other cardiovascular outcomes. But later studies, many were negative, either because they were underdosed or underpowered. Some meta-analyses were also uh, reported as negative, even though they had many positive findings. Uh, but the p-values were set very stringently, like at 0.001 instead of the usual 0.05. But in November 2018, at our American Heart Association meetings, and published that same week in the New England Journal of Medicine, three large studies showed quite beneficial results to reduce it, the vital and the ascend. And this led us to do a major review um, with uh, Evan O'Keefe, myself, and several other colleagues that was titled, Sea Change in Omega-3s, Randomized Trials Show Reductions in Major Cardiovascular Events, which was published online in mid-2019 and in an issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in late 2019. I'm Dr. Carl Chiflevy. I'm a professor of medicine and medical director of cardiac rehabilitation and preventive cardiology and director of the exercise laboratories at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, Oshner Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine. I also happen to be one of the associate editors and the cardiovascular section editor of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. But I'm here today to discuss our new paper titled the impact of omega-3 dosage on cardiovascular outcomes, an updated meta-analysis and meta-regression of interventional trials, which is published online now and will soon be in an issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'd first like to start off by acknowledging and congratulating the excellent efforts of my co-authors, particularly the lead and first author, Dr. Aldo Bernasconi, He's a lead scientist at GOED, Global Organization of EPA, DHA, Omega-3s. And he did an excellent job of, of coordinating the efforts of our writing group, as well as helping get this paper through a very difficult uh, review process in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Michelle Weist uh, is a, uh, an epidemiologist and an expert in statistics at the University of Idaho and made tremendous contributions this paper. My colleague here at Austin, Dr. Richard Milani, and I have published uh, hundreds of papers together, including a number on omega-3. And Dr. Milani also happened to do original research over three decades ago with the famous omega-3 researcher, Dr. Alex Leaf, when they were together in Boston. And finally, Dr. Jari Lukanen from Finland uh, is one of the the, the Europe's experts and the world's experts in, in cardiology and preventive cardiology, and we're delighted that he also joined us uh, on this effort. This was a very major meta-analysis of 40 studies in over 135,000 participants to assess the effects of omega-3, EPA, and DHA on major cardiovascular outcomes. And we showed, I think, quite impressive results. The most significant finding was a 35% reduction in fatal myocardial infarction with a number needed to treat of only 128 to reduce one fatal myocardial infarction. We also showed a 13% reduction in the MI risk with a number needed to treat of 272 to reduce one MI. There was a 10% reduction in the risk of coronary heart disease events with the number needed to treat of 192, and a 9% reduction in the risk of fatal coronary heart disease events, or coronary heart disease mortality, uh, with a number needed to treat of 431. We also showed a 5% reduction in cardiovascular events, but this was not quite statistically significant uh, with a p-value just over 0.05. But overall, quite impressive 
uh, event reduction. Our study also assessed omega-3 dosage, which is a very important uh, finding in our study. Uh, and our study was powered to do this because five of the trials used doses uh, of less than 800 milligrams, and there were uh, 8,000 people in this group. Ten studies used doses between 800 and 1,200 milligrams. There were over 90,000 participants in this group. And 25 studies used doses of over 1,200 milligrams, and there were over 30,000 in this group. So the average dosage in our study was 1,221 milligrams. And overall, our results showed that the higher the dose, the better was the overall cardiovascular outcomes for, for really all of the parameters. The ones that were statistically significant were cardiovascular events and myocardial infarction. For every one gram increase in EPA DHA combined, there was a 5.8% reduction in cardiovascular events and a 9% reduction in myocardial infarctions. So quite significant dosage effects. There's also been the perception that the earliest studies were more positive than the latest studies uh, on omega-3. And maybe that's because the, in the latest studies, the overall medical treatment was much more vigorous, more, you know, after cardiac events, more interventions with P PCI, more dual antiplatelet therapy, high-dose statins, et cetera. Maybe making it harder to show that omega-3 was producing benefits. But in our study, we did not find any significant effect of year of publication on omega-3's effects to produce reductions in cardiovascular disease outcomes. And also, there's been debate of whether EPA is more important or is it the combination of EPA and DHA. This particularly came to light with the two EPA alone studies to reduce it in the JELUS trials that showed quite dramatic effects. But in our study, we could not find any statistical difference between the total EPA dosage or the combined EPA DHA dosage on the effects on major cardiovascular events. This huge meta-analysis of 40 trials and over 135,000 participants provides some pretty strong evidence for the potential benefits of omega-3 or EPA DHA specifically in reducing major cardiovascular outcomes. This is particularly noted for fatal myocardial infarction minus 35%, uh, total MIs minus 13%, coronary heart disease minus 10%, and CHD mortality minus 9%, quite significant uh, effects with a strong trend for the 5% reduction in cardiovascular events. We also showed a strong dosage effect overall, but was statistically significant for cardiovascular events and for myocardial infarction, supporting evidence that higher doses of the agents or maybe higher blood levels, we didn't assess blood levels in our study, are associated with better cardiovascular disease event reduction. So in conclusion, Considering the low cost and the very low side effect pro profile, as well as the very low risk of drug-drug interactions with virtually anything, uh, any drug or any therapy used in the primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular events, our strong findings of reduction in cardiovascular outcomes, I think strongly suggest now that clinicians should be adding omega-3 preferably at a dose closer to a gram per day of combined EPA DHA, and maybe at doses between one and two grams per day of combined EPA DHA for the primary and secondary prevention of major cardiovascular disease outcomes. Thank you very much, and I hope that this information is helpful uh, to the, the physicians and clinicians uh, who are providing primary and secondary preventive care to uh, our patients. Thank you very much.
We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.